Welcome back, Gingies, to a new video. As you know, I am a level 10 face it, and I'm not gonna rub it in your face. I am going to help you improve and get a higher level on face it. So, today, I have a few tips on how you can do that. Let's get right into it, shall we? TikTok, what the fuck are you doing? You haven't subscribed yet? The video's loading. Go do it now, and don't forget to leave a like. Alright, looks like my time is up. The video has loaded. Enjoy. In this video, I'm going to be giving you tips that are focused on face it. So I'm not going to tell you to warm up before you play your game or that you need to watch your demos after your game is finished. Those are tips that are more general and more focused on improving your CS gameplay overall. So if you want to know stuff like that, I have a ton of guides on my channel which can help you improve uh, around that stuff. But this video is really just focused on the face it aspect because i feel like there's not a lot of videos that talk about that stuff but cutting straight to the point with tip number one it's not gonna get better with saying it won't get better i'm talking about your teammates because a big misconception about face it is the higher your level the higher your teammates and this is not true at all throughout level 1 to 10 all of your teammates will be idiots will be stupid and will just straight up be dog shit and not know how to play the game and then some of you might say but you're level 10 surely in level 10 no no <laughs> no, in level 10, it's still not good. There's still a lot of people that do not know what they're doing, that are just straight up shit, that have no clue what they have to do in the game. And I'm telling you, it doesn't get better. Your teammates won't improve. And you might say, but you're not really giving a tip here. Well, my tip is be ready to get into a game that's going to be a 1v9. I already explained this in a ton of other videos, but keeping that 1v9 mindset really helps you to not over peak to not take stupid risks and all of that stuff for example when i'm in a 5v3 i do not overextend. i do not make stupid mistakes and i keep playing safe and keep playing like it should be played because in my head i'm thinking i'm in a 1v3 and most of the times you're going to be in situations like that and your teammates are going to be stupid and idiotic and overextend make stupid mistakes and it will eventually end up in a 1v3 so just from the start of the situation just think i'm alone and that already solves a fuck ton. Also, what should you do when you meet that unicorn player, that player that does help you and that is actually good? Well, I suggest you add him and maybe play a few games with them. Which brings me straight to tip number two. Learn to say no to people. I know a lot of people and I see a lot of people who constantly queue with their friends when their friend is the problem that they're losing the game. If you're losing the game because of your friend, you're gonna need to learn to say no to them and to not play with them, especially if you want to improve because they are the ones that are keeping you down. There's so much more stuff that you can play with them. Just play Premiere or MM with them. It's You don't have to fully say no, but just don't play face it with them, it's as easy as that. Every player has a different skill ceiling, has a different skill limit, and if your friend is not able to keep up with you, then sadly you'll just have to cut them off. Just don't play face it with them. Playing face it is already hard enough, performing is already hard enough, so having somebody that's constantly pulling you down isn't going to help you a lot. And this also implies to randoms, I've did this when I was trying to grind to a higher level as well. I played the game with somebody that was good. I added them, they were friendly. I thought, you know what, let me queue another game with them. They performed like horseshit. Uh, and the game after, I thought, you know what, he performed good the first game, second game he was bad. Surely the third game, he might be a little bit average again. And the third game, he was even worse. He was just straight up the reason that we were losing those games. So I just decided to not play with them anymore because, well, he just had a live game or I don't know, whatever, but he's the reason that you're losing. Just say no to not playing with them, it's as easy as that. Surely if they're your real friends, they will understand that you're trying to grind and that you're trying to get a higher level and they won't make a problem out of it. Tip number three. If you haven't done this yet, I really suggest you do, and that's buy Face It Premium. Face It Premium gives you a lot of shit, like all of this stuff, and it does really help. From my experience, I play against way less Mercs when I use Face It Premium. There's a way lower difference in ELO between teams, and the games seem more fair. So I do really suggest you trying out Face It Premium. 
um, and some of you will say I don't have the money for it, which I understand because I'm also broke as fuck. But on Black Friday and at the end of the year and most of the times in the summer as well, I think face it does a sale and the premium is like way cheaper than it usually is. With this, I would also like to say that it would be probably a good idea to verify your account. It does look like Faceit is making updates and changing stuff about that shit. Um, so the experience gets way better and you play against less smurfs and less new accounts. And I think it really has been helping. So I suggest you do that as well. For the next tip, we're going to take a look at my face it settings. And some of you might say, well, this is not really helpful, but I, I think giving an insight of what settings I use might be able to give you the right settings and make sure that you have the right stuff to use, you know? So first of all, as you can see, I'm using the super match, which is the thing that you get when you buy face it premium. And this has been really helpful. And I'm also using the verified match. So this kind of connects with the previous step. It's really good to verify yourself and to buy face it premium. I always leave these two on because I've turned these off and tested uh, like playing games without them and most of them are fucking horrendous uh, and a lot of the people I play against are smurfs so yeah next up is the server selector I only selected four servers the Netherlands Germany France and Finland I feel like those are the best servers for me I do recommend like closing a few of them don't just keep all of them selected because some of them might give you really high ping that's why I turned four off and I have four on. Next up is the maps and the maps you need a minimum of five maps selected. So I do suggest that you unselect two maps. How do you decide which map that you need to unselect? Well, this is going to be personal to everybody. The way I do this, well, I have two separate ways of selecting maps that I don't want to play my next game. First one is unselecting maps that I'm not really performing on, that I'm not giving 100% on. If I'm losing dust seven times in a row and I'm not performing at all, I'll unselect dust and turn another map on. The second way is deciding based on the map and not your personal preference or your personal performance. Take for example Ancient. Ancient is a map that has been giving my PC huge problems so next time when I will be playing a face it game I'm probably turning off Ancient because I just got huge FPS drops. The reason right now Nuke and Inferno are turned off is because I feel like these maps are really team based and if you look back at tip number one like I said your teammates do not get better they will always be stupid and do not know what they're doing even in level 10. That's the reason why Inferno and Nuke are turned off because I played Inferno games where we're just unable to take any control of the map because nobody knows what they're doing same goes for nuke on t side it's really hard to do something if your team is not communicating if your team doesn't know what they're doing so that's why i turned these two maps off like it's just a really hard team map and especially playing with randoms that you don't know that are stupid it's really hard to perform on those maps of course you need team play on every map uh, but I just feel like on other maps I can do it myself and I don't really need to tame while on Nuke and Inferno it's really hard for me um, So yeah, that's why I turned them off for my next tip We still need to have face it open because I'm suggesting you play face it tournaments And this might sound stupid and you might think what the fuck am I going to do with those face it tournaments? Well, those tournaments are basically based on your level as you can see if I play face it late night uh, Inferno which is just only playing Inferno, I will be placed against level 8 and level 10 players. This is just an easy way to queue against people of your level without losing ELO. So during these tournaments, you don't lose ELO and you're playing against your skill level. So it's a way calmer environment to experiment shit and to try out stuff and see if it works against people of your level then you also could go to hubs there's also a ton of hubs like for example uh the shipic 5v5 hell case uh this is a hub where sometimes a lot of people queue and you can play 5v5 without losing elo but the thing with this is that the skill level difference a lot uh, like i played these and i played against level ones and threes so i don't 
learn a lot from them. That's why I think the tournaments are way better because they're based on the skill level that you are. Now I might hear you say, but waiting for these tournaments takes so long. I lose one game, I'm out of the tournaments, then I don't get to practice anymore. Uh, I win a game, I have to wait an hour before the other team finishes their game to play another one. It's also tedious, I don't want to do that stuff. Well, then you can try out eSportal. If you do not know what eSportal is, eSportal is basically just face it. Um, it has its own skill levels as well. You can play 5v5s, it's ranked, it has tournaments, all of that stuff. It's basically just face it. There's a lot less players on this website than on face it, but that doesn't mean they're bad. They're still way better than MM players, than Premier players, and they will dick you down. Like a lot of them will dick you down. I also played games on this website and I did learn a lot of stuff. Uh, like I've really played against pro players on this side and shit. So yeah, some of them are really good. So because of the less player base, it might take you a little bit longer to find a game, but it really helps a lot playing on this website. And the thing with this website is, who gives a fuck that you're losing ELO? It's not face it. So just use this side as your calm environment to experiment and to try out stuff and go ahead over to face it to play your real games and to try hard that's what i do that's what really helps me and that helped me improve calm place learning place try hard stuff here we go hard here we don't try stupid stuff here try stupid stuff learn here fall on try hard don't give a fuck about my teammates 1v9 all right, so for the next tip, tip number six, I just want to say the tip does kind of fit in with tip number seven, but I separated them so it's easier to explain and easier to understand a little bit. Tip number six, which doesn't only come from me, but also a lot of pro players say this, is set yourself a goal. It really helps a lot. During my climb to level 10, I constantly set goals for myself and I'm still doing this now. When I was level four, I said this month, I'm reaching level five, work towards it, hit my goal, done. Next goal, level 6, and I just kept doing that. Now I'm level 10, my next goal is 2400 ELO, I recently hit the goal of 2300 ELO, and I just keep doing it and setting myself goals. You should set easy and doable goals, and the reason that you should do this is because you set yourself something that isn't too far away, it's obtainable, it's doable, and when you do it, you really feel accomplished because you reached your goal. When you're level 4 and you set yourself the goal to reach level 5 uh, this month, for example, you have a reason to work to it, you have a reason to practice because you want to do it this month and it doesn't look that far away. When you're telling your brain, all right, I'm going to go to level 10. When you're level 4, that's six sucking levels, all right? <laughs> it's not going to happen in a month. So just set yourself the goal, a closer goal, one that's inside and that you can obtain. Trust me, it might sound stupid, but do this. It really helps, even with small things. I literally set goals for myself to just practice three times a week. That's my goal when I do it. I feel accomplished. I did what I had to do and also feel the need to do it more because it's the goal I set for myself. So I do really hope this shows you how important setting a goal is and I really hope you start doing it because it will help you a lot. Moving on to tip number seven, which kind of fits in with tip number six, set your goals is don't tilt queue to reach your goal. A lot of people do this and tilt queuing is a very big problem. Uh, you might already think, well, I'm one of those people, I do this. Don't, it's really not good. And I'll explain to you why I'll try to visualize it because just saying don't do it, most of the time it just goes in the left ear and comes out the right ear. So I'm going to try and make you understand why it's really bad. Try to visualize a stationary car in front of you, all right? You're standing at the back of the car and you want the car to move forward to gain ELO. The car represents your ELO. When the car starts moving, it has a forward momentum. It starts to feel easier to roll the car. It starts to feel lighter and less harder to push. That is basically you going on a winning streak and gaining a lot of ELO. Of course, with this forward momentum, you also have the opposite, which is tilt queuing, and that's the backwards momentum. Let's say the stationary car is in front of you. It's not moving, all right? It's going to be hard to push it and to start moving it. 
Imagine if the car is rolling back. If the car is rolling backwards to you, and then you need to push it to make the backwards momentum go towards forward momentum, that shit is going to be extremely fucking hard. And that's basically what tilt queuing is. Now, a question for you is, if you're tilt queuing, the car is rolling backwards to you, all right? How do you make it easier for the car to go forwards again? I'll give you some time to think about it. One, two, three. Uh, if you said stopping the car, putting in a stationary, you're right. If the car isn't stationary, it's going to be hard to start moving it forward, but it's going to be way less harder than when the car is rolling back and you need to fight the backwards momentum. So what do I suggest you do? Well, just take checkpoints, all right? The finish line is there, all right? You want to reach level five, you're level four, the car starts rolling, it's moving forward. It's okay to just say, all right, I'm on four wins, checkpoint stop here just take a break it's going to be hard to start pushing it again but you're already halfway there all right same goes for the rolling backwards just stop the car take a little break listen to some music just play against bots a little play that match game and then start pushing the car again it's going to be way easier than fighting all that backwards momentum those negative thoughts the tilt it's just, it's way easier. It's okay to take breaks. It's okay to take checkpoints. It's okay to lose two to three games, but it's going to be way easier if you take a break after those two games and you need to start rolling from those two games again, than losing nine games, being all the way in the back and needing to start rolling from there again. What I usually do is I set myself a goal, but I also set myself a limit. When I lose two games, I'm done, that's enough. I practice, I warm up again, I take a little break, and then I can get into the game again. Just set yourself a limit, set yourself a goal. Losing is part of the process. If you're not losing, you're not learning stuff, all right? Don't take losing as something that's so fucking bad. You're learning from it. It's really important that you do lose, all right? It's part of the journey. Your journey can't just be winning, but you'll get there eventually, and these checkpoints, putting checkpoints, can definitely help you so i suggest you try this metaphor out and i think it will really help you moving on to my last tip of this video i know it's been a long video but i really hope it did help you a lot and that's don't forget to have fun so many of you forget to have fun when you're playing the game because you just want to be that professional player you want to reach that level 10 you want to be that guy you can't do that if you're not having fun if you're not enjoying yourself all of that stuff it's going to affect you mentally it's going to affect your aim and all of that stuff and you're not even gonna realize it try to have a little bit of fun try to laugh a little bit just enjoy the game all right it's okay to lose it's good to win but it's okay to lose shit happens you'll get there eventually sometimes you just need a little bit of motivation all right and i believe in you guys you can fucking do it me and you we go together through this journey that's why i'm going to ask you to like this video if you did enjoy it don't forget to subscribe and you can always turn on the notifications as well because sometimes uh, like my videos get uploaded and people don't notice that they're online because they don't have notifications on and that's going to be it for this video gingies i hope i was able to help you a little bit and i will see you in the next one peace <laughs>